Um, so my name's Ben Holt, and I'm the education officer at Erin Earth. Erin Earth is a not-for-profit charity in Wagga that aims to help people live sustainably in our local area. To start off, I'd just like to first acknowledge that we gathered on Wiradjuri land. Uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the amazing Wiradjuri culture that's already been caring for this place for thousands of years. I'd like to pay my respect to Aboriginal people present here today and pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging. Uh, my speech today is titled The Things We Can Remind Ourselves. Um, to start off with, I'll just give you a tiny little bit of background about how I came to be interested in the issue of climate change and care about it. So I grew up on a farm near Albury and in the late 90s, um, when I was in my teen years, we had a few droughts and I saw the impact that that had on animals. And how, and how that would in turn have an impact on humans as well. And it got me thinking, it sent me to university to do a geography, politics and teaching degrees. And um, six and a half years later, I entered the workforce and I now am lucky enough to have a fantastic job with Erin Earth in Wagga. So I'll start off by saying we, we can remind ourselves here, that us gathered here today um, in, in what's a difficult position on a 40 degree day in November. And sometimes we feel a bit um, lonely. I think here in Wagga that we care about this issue and we, we might feel that others don't. I think we can remind ourselves that we're not alone. Uh, I wanna remind us that we're part of a global movement to make the world a better, more sustainable and more equitable place. And earlier in the year, I was lucky enough to go up to Brisbane to the Al Gore Climate Change Conference. And there were 700 people in the room just like me from all over the world, actually, some from India, Pacific Islands, Australia, many from New Zealand, many First Nations peoples. I was really energized by that conference. and I'm gonna try and give you a few um, ideas to help you feel the same way I did when I came out of that conference, which was actually really positive. Because I think we need that here in Wagga. We can remind ourselves that the future of our planet will be based on more sustainable technologies than we have available to us today. We can remind ourselves that every single little thing we do to reduce our emissions in our day-to-day -day life is in line with the way the world is going. And those people that don't aren't in line with the way the world is already going. So I think we should feel good about that. We are the early adopters of the way the world is going. We're on trend by caring about this issue and trying to do something about it. And we can be proud of that. I'm going to say a few things here that you may not have known already and that I heard at the conference that, that gave me a lot of positivity. So you might be hearing them for the first time. And I think once you hear them, it's helpful to remind ourselves about them as we go through our day-to-day -day lives. So we can remind ourselves that the first thing the entire world has ever agreed on, all together, every country is fighting climate change. The whole world couldn't agree with how, how, how the world should run after World War I and World War II were finished. The whole world couldn't agree on how we should manage whale populations and whale hunting. The whole world couldn't agree on how we should manage CFCs and the hole in the ozone layer in the 90s. The first thing that the whole world has ever agreed on was climate change and we should do something about it. It happened in Paris four years ago. We can remind ourselves that according to Wikipedia in 2015, 800,000 people around the world marched in the People's Climate March. This year, only four years later, in a similar march, six million people marched around the world. So we can remind ourselves that we're part of not only a global movement, but a growing global movement. We can remind ourselves that over 170 companies Big companies, global companies, have already made a commitment to be powered by 100% renewable sources. Some of them are already, such as Apple. You might have heard of some of the others, Ikea, eBay, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Nike, Sony. We can remind ourselves that California, which if it was a country, would be the fifth largest economy in the world, has passed a law stating that by 2045, 100% of the state's electricity must be created by carbon-free means. We can remind ourselves, but within the next five years, electric cars will be the same price as fossil fuel powered cars. The transition to electric cars is coming a lot quicker than a lot of people know. 
we can remind ourselves that this is a really new one. Yesterday, in Sydney, Australia's, I'm going to embarrass myself now because I can't remember the exact name of the organisation, but there's a group of businesses in Australia um, that are committed to becoming more sustainable as quickly as possible. And at that conference, two of Australia's richest people, Mike Cannon Brooks and Andrew Twiggy Forrest, have been talking about how they have already poured in millions of dollars to make the world's biggest solar farm in Australia. They've already done that. And the vision for that is that Australia will be the first country to en masse export electricity to another country. First country ever, and, and that country will be Singapore. So if you, when you're feeling down, what I'm trying to tell you is if we start to remind ourselves that these things are happening around the world, we don't feel so alone in Wagga. We can remind ourselves that in 2018, both China and India installed more renewable-based electricity generating plants than coal-fired power stations. The reason for this is that now it's either on par or cheaper in those two low-income countries to make an, a power station from renewable sources compared to coal. It's either at the same price or cheaper to go renewable in a low-income country. We can remind ourselves that in Europe, so in the high-income countries in the world, already in 2018, 88% of all their new power plants were renewable sources. We're heading towards a renewable future and people like us, we're at the front of that. We're on the front foot with that change. We can remind ourselves that coal consumption in the United States is on a downward trend and has been for the last 10 years, regardless of who their president is. And we can remind ourselves that the four top bank, the four biggest banks in Australia, who cop a lot of flack for being very conservative, have all committed to 100% renewable energy target by 2030 at the latest. So what I'm trying to get across is when you feel alone, you go, this is such a big problem, we're not going fast enough. Well, there are a lot of things happening. You may just not be seeing them. Whichever way you look at it, our world and the 7.6 billion people on it are moving towards a more environmentally are moving towards more environmentally friendly technologies and practices, not the other way around. It may not be moving as quickly as people like us would like it, but it's moving that way. I saw something on Facebook recently which might be relevant to how some of us feel at the moment. The inventor of the engine probably had to use a horse and cart most of their life. The inventor of the light bulb probably had to use a candle for a long time. People inventing steel probably had a house made of iron. We're living in a world at the moment that might not be what we want, but it doesn't mean it's going to stay the same. We might be frustrated with the lack of action by some, but I don't think that warrants us feeling completely defeated in the face of the positive things I mentioned earlier. All of those facts I mentioned make me feel confident that the future is green. My vision is that Wagga can be known for its proactive stance on understanding, understanding the issue and taking steps to re responsibly act on it. According to the Victorian government, one fifth of all greenhouse gas emissions in Australia are created by households. So they're created by the things that you and I and people like you and I do every day. One fifth, four fifths is created by industry in Australia. What that means is that people like you and I have the power to influence one fifth of Australia's greenhouse gas emissions, which I think is really interesting. This tells me we don't need the approval of industry. We don't need the approval of government. We don't need the approval of anybody to take action on this issue because we can do it every day. We don't need everyone to agree with us either. One part of the beauty of the action being taken now is that every day, almost everyone here can take meaningful steps to address this issue in our own lives. And I believe there was a great speech earlier on that unfortunately I missed, where you suggested the things that people can do in their everyday lives. We don't need permits signed in triplicate. We don't need to wait for other people. There's things that we can do every day. And now to the future. <laughs> At this point in time in 2019, the things that we do around the world, 
we still have the power to influence over the next few centuries how many bushfires there are. We still have the power to influence how many heat waves there are, how much sea level rise there is, how, how strong tropical cyclones will be. We still have the power to influence how many species extinctions there'll be, how much damage to infrastructure there'll be, how much coral bleaching there'll be, how many floods, droughts there'll be, how much food prices will rise, and how big the decreases in human and animal health are. They're all the main big global impacts of climate change that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change mentions. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says that now we still have the power to influence that in the future. In 15 years, if we still keep going the way we're going, where everyone in the world didn't care, we won't. But at the moment now, we do. And I think that should make us feel good. We can remind ourselves that we can be part of this positive movement. We can remind ourselves that every day we get to contribute to the history of the human race in a positive way. It's an exciting time. We can remind ourselves that knowledge and action on this topic is growing and that actually we are headed in the right direction. It might not be as fast as what we want, but we are heading in the right direction. We can remind ourselves that humans have faced and overcome global challenges before, such as the aversion of global nuclear war in the 60s, which was a really big threat. We solved that. It didn't happen. And we solved it with people power and intelligence. We can remind ourselves that humans are capable of doing things that previously no one thought capable, such as walking on the moon. We've done it. We did it 60 years ago, around 60 years ago, with technology which is nothing like what we have today. We're capable of doing things that we thought were previously impossible. The challenge we face now is no different. So let's remind ourselves to stick together, to walk together, to talk together, and to act positively together. Thank you.